Hi, welcome back to my channel, Faraday Academy. Today I want to talk about a question that I've been asked a lot over the years, and that is about how to create and follow a coding curriculum. Now, even if you are going through a coding boot camp or you're going to college, you're still going to have to teach yourself a lot of things. So this video isn't just for self learners, but kind of for everyone that's learning programming right now. So for starters, the number one thing that you need, if you don't have it already, is to set a goal. You need to have a goal of where you want to end up in five years because your learning plan and your trajectory is going to be affected by what your goals are. You can't just say, oh, I want to learn how to code. Okay, well, what kind of company, what kind of lifestyle do you want to have in five years? Where do you want to be at? What kind of things do you value more in a job? Those are all really important things to consider when you start learning because you might learn different technologies or focus your career in an entirely different direction. So those kind of things you really have to start figuring out ahead of time. Aside from that, some people don't just generally want to learn how to code. They already know, oh, I want to do mobile development or I want to get into data science. But if you don't know yet, you're going to have to do a little bit of research first. So once you have your goal about where you want to be in the next year, in the next five years, then you can sit down and figure out what type of company will get you there. So let's say you want a stable job, but one that is local to you. Then maybe a very stable mid-sized company in your area would be a great fit. So you have to look at all those companies. So you can look at your state government website and local job boards and figure out which companies are you interested in working at. Then you can go to their websites or look at their job postings on the job boards and figure out, okay, what technologies would I have to learn in order to work at these types of companies? And you can see what roles are they generally hiring for. For example, where I'm living right now in the Midwest, of course we have a ton of JavaScript developer jobs, but this is also a city that has a history of using .NET, so there's still a ton of c -sharp jobs. So if I wanted a, a good, stable job at one of these companies, I would probably gear my learning towards learning the .NET stack and some JavaScript. So once I have that figured out, the next thing to do is to look at bootcamp curriculums and see what they are teaching their students to achieve the same goal. For example, there are some boot camps that will teach web development or mobile app development or data science, and they will let you download their whole curriculum for free. Places like Grace Hopper Academy and Thinkful are two excellent boot camps that allow you to enter your email address and see their whole curriculum. Now, if you're doing something besides web or mobile development, maybe you want to get into AI and data science, a place like Springboard might be right for you. And you can go and look at what they're teaching their students to achieve the goal of getting them into that industry. Print it out or save it in a Word document. And this is going to be the backbone for your curriculum. So now you also have an order to your learning. Instead of just writing down all the different technologies from job postings, the bootcamp teaches them in the order, usually from easiest to the hardest concepts at the end. So now you know where to start and what technologies. Now you can use free online programs. If you're doing web development, you can use places like Free Code Camp and Team Treehouse. And then you plug in each of these steps of the curriculum. So if you're starting from HTML and CSS, go through a Team Treehouse course or go to Free Code Camp. Or maybe you want to start learning from books, so you could go through head first HTML, CSS. And after each step of the curriculum, so if you're learning HTML, CSS, after that step, build a project. Build a lookalike page for Google or some other page that you frequent. Every single step in this learning process, you should be building and applying what you have learned. If you aren't working on a project every few weeks or month at least, then you're just going to forget everything that you've learned so far and it's a waste. So building is really the way to learn. I think you should only do a few tutorials and just enough to learn a the basics of a concept and then you have to jump into doing a project. Now the projects do get more complicated as you go along, of course. 
So if you're building, let's say, a Google homepage lookalike, that shouldn't take very long. But when you're building a full stack modern application at the end, and maybe you're writing tests and doing all these other things, that's gonna take a while, maybe several weeks. So if you're tr having trouble as you're going along finding projects to build, just look at what other people have built. Go look at apps, look at CodePen, look at any kind of inspiration, especially in the beginning ch stages, mimic what someone else is doing, try to build the same thing, and you're gonna learn so much from that. Now towards the end, when you're building projects, you really want to start thinking about what you're going to put in your portfolio. And whatever projects you're gonna keep in your portfolio, which will probably be three to four in the beginning, you don't wanna have those as just tutorial projects. So I see a lot of people's portfolios, they just have projects that I've seen a 100 times already, and it's not a good look for you when you're applying for a job. So if you're building a common project, for example, a to-do list application, everybody builds a to-do list application for every language or web framework or mobile app they ever build. It's not exciting and it's easy to do and it looks like you just followed a tutorial and didn't actually think for yourself. So you have to be a little creative. What other features can you add? Can you put your own spin on it? For example, I saw one girl put a spin on a Pinterest lookalike that was winter themed. It looked really cool and she added some features of her own. And I think these kind of apps that you make your own, that you make interesting for someone who's potentially going to hire you for a job to look at, then that's a really great thing. Now in your portfolio, of course, you don't want to just put those kind of apps. You also want to have at least one passion project. This could be anything. For example, if you like health and nutrition, maybe you're making some kind of a fitness app. Or if you're into productivity, maybe you have this deluxe uh, lifestyle manager with a calendar management system or something like that. So you should take whatever you're passionate about and have it kind of in the back of your head, like you're thinking about, oh, what features could I put in this? What would people find useful? And it doesn't have to be something that people will actually ever use. And that should be the kind of app that you really work on and really polish to be the highlight of your portfolio at the end of your learning. Then another recommendation I wanna make is that throughout your learning, you also need to be working with other people. This can be difficult if you're self-learning, of course, because you don't have a classroom full of other people who are at the same learning stage as you and instructed to pair with you. Now, one way you could do this is by going to local meetup groups and coding events, especially coding coffees, and asking to see if anyone wants to pair program with you or build a project collaboratively with you. Most of the time you can find at least a couple of people who are willing to work with you on that. Another thing you can do, especially if you don't live in a city or maybe you don't have a car or something, you can go online to places like the Free Code Camp Forum or the Code Newbie Chat and try to find a pair programming partner. So you just post a message saying you're looking to pair with someone or you can search for people who are already looking for people to pair with. Now, the first time you pair, I suggest you work on something small and don't start a big project. Maybe you just wanna build one feature and see how well you work with the other person first before you jump into project planning and everything like that. And you also wanna make sure you have the same goal as the other person, which is completing a project. The importance of having a collaborative project on your resume is that you can show employers like, hey, I can work with people. You know, none of us work in a vacuum. As a developer, you will be working on a team with people. And it's great if you can show an employer upfront proof that you are capable of working on a team, of coding collaboratively, of using Git and all the other tools that you will need. Another thing I wanna say is that don't get distracted. If you're on a learning plan, stick to that learning plan. Don't go down a rabbit hole on the internet. If you're on a blog or YouTube, there's always other things being suggested to you. And then you just start clicking on one thing after another and that can take up your whole learning block just going through tutorial after tutorial after tutorial. You have to stick to what your learning plan is, go through that learning plan, start building the project and don't get distracted or else it's gonna take you forever and you're gonna end up giving up in frustration. One thing to note is that with each piece that you're gonna learn, 
You're gonna be building projects which are going to require you to pick up new skills every single time you start a project. So you might be bringing in a new library or a new developer tool to work with this project and that's fine. If it's the best thing to use for the project, then you should absolutely use it. But don't let extra things distract you from what your, what your goals are. Now this is going to be a long process. It could take you six months, nine months, one year or more. It depends on how much time and effort you're willing to put into it, how many distractions you allow yourself, and also what place you are coming in, like if you're starting already with some knowledge. From my experience, it usually takes people about 700 to 1,000 hours to learn how to code to sufficiently to the point where they can get a job. Now, it will be a little bit different for everybody, but if you are focused, I think it should take you around that amount of time. You should be setting weekly goals for how many hours you spend as you go along. For example, I used to set a goal where I would spend 21 hours every week in my studies and I would keep track of that progress every week. I also blogged about it and posted about it on my social media to kind of keep me accountable to what my goals are and what I was trying to achieve at that time. I wish you the best in your journey and in making and following a curriculum. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear how it's going for you. If you are teaching yourself and want some more help and advice, I did write a book on this subject that just got published this week. It's called Learn to Code, Get a Job, and I'll link that below for Amazon and Barnes and Noble. If you like this content, please comment and subscribe for more. I will be launching a new series next week where I build an app from start to finish, from conception and planning and mock-ups to starting up a dev environment and then finally building and deploying the application. So stay tuned for that. Thank you and have a great week.